preparations are in full swing here in Washington for the 2016 March for Life on Friday, January 22nd. Now less than three weeks away, Jeannie Mancini is busy because she's president of March mm -hmm. for Life. Jeannie, let's explore this year's motto of March for Life. Pro-life and pro-woman go hand in hand. Right. Right, so the March for Life is this wonderful educational opportunity, kind of a platform to teach about the most cutting edge issues that we need to hear about the most. And there are so many conflicted and confusing messages out there about women that we thought that this was really the providential and opportune time to talk about this. Life empowers women. Life is good for women and being pro-life is truly being pro-woman. So the theme is pro-life and pro-women go hand in hand. So with all this talk of the war on women, right. do you think the American public gets this, especially women, that being for life is pro-women? Well, I think that we are bombarded with false messages about what it means to be a woman, and many women are falsely um, told and, and start to believe these ideas that they have to control uh, their fertility and they have to have a lot of control over you know, the possibility of being a mother instead of understanding that a woman's capacity to be a mother, whether she ever is biologically or not, very much informs who she is as a person. It's very intricate to her inherent dignity and vocation as a woman. And so that's very much tied into this theme for this March for Life. So this false idea that to be pro-woman you have to be pro-choice is something we just want to squash because it's, it's really, it's manipulative and it's not true. Well, we are four days into 2016, a presidential election year. How do you see this March for Life playing into that election? I think particularly in the messaging, I think the March for Life will continue with our theme this entire year. And, and we mentioned the false war on women that will be prevalent, you know, with some of the messaging for, for this election. And so we want to get the truth out there. Again, that being pro-life is being pro-woman and that this um, capacity for motherhood is empowering to women. So we will be beating the drum. <laughs> Would you, are you expecting any of the presidential candidates to participate? You know, we're not a political organization per se, so that's not something that we would particularly invite. Um, so, but at the same time, we'd love it if any of the candidates came and marched, and many of them have in the past. And yeah. we'd also really like our candidates to make a stance that if, if and when they win, that they will come to the March for Life and speak that following year. After they're that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people are really deeply involved in this now. How do yeah. you see this shaping the future of the march and the pro-life movement? Yeah, uh, narrow pro-choice America a few years ago talked publicly, and I think they were probably humiliated after they did this about the March for Life and how there are just hordes and hordes of young people. And they decided that they needed a change in marketing after that, you know, and they changed their president and, and they basically thought, what are we doing wrong? You know, why aren't we appealing to young people? Um, the truth is that it wasn't a marketing issue. It was a product issue. Young people can see through falsehoods and, and they know the truth and they know that the truth sets you free. Uh, St. John Paul II talked about young people as being the best ambassadors for life because they're so enthusiastic and they see abortion as the human rights issue of today. They know that they will do away with this human rights issue. So, for example, Students for Life is just one of my favorite groups because of their enthusiasm and vigor. They are full of life <laughs> and that really shows. Jeannie Mancini with March for Life. Yeah. Thank you. We'll Thanks see you on the 22nd. Me, Brian. Thank you.